Hi, I'm Ian Bouquet Taylor. I'm the Operations Director here at AE Aerospace. AE Aerospace is an SME based in the West Midlands. Uh, we provide um, components, machined um, components, CNC machining to the aerospace and defence sectors, mostly making components for uh, the aftermarket space, um, but also some OE um, into um, civil aircraft, defence aircraft, and for marine, uh, the marine sector. Um, in the last 12 months, we've been working with West Midlands 5G and Ericsson and BT to implement a 5G private network um, that has um, the plan to transform how we handle data and our efficiency of our business. It's all part of what we call the glass factory concept. Um, and that glass factory it, is a term we use to try and build a transparent factory so that our customers and our suppliers can work directly with us. So we've partnered with our ERP provider, Fit Factory, to look at the use of some of their tools. Um, and the use of those tools for us um, is providing us with an end-to-end -end view of our business. So at the front end, we have a tool called Greybox, which builds our production schedule. And at the back end, uh, we have a tool called OpenBook, which is a portal tool that will allow our customers to view us uh, live where their products are, but also to view our production schedule with the intention long-term of building a capacity availability model. That means we can sell capacity to our customers prior to um, their needs, rather than waiting for them to have a job that comes in to produce um, a part to a drawing. As part of that, we've worked with the Westman's 5G uh, group to define three use cases um, that, that are split across the business. The, the first is machine servitization. So this is where the fit factory use uh, for us sits mostly, um, because what we're doing is we're um, producing a production plan um, that's live um, and gets sent to each machine individually from a central hub. Um, and then the machine will talk via the 5G network back to the plan and say, I've achieved or I haven't achieved the product in time or the product quality. And that will set off a series of um, processes, things like um, we'll triage if we haven't had a, if we had a quality issue, we'll triage if we've had um, an issue around not meeting the plan time. The feedback from each of those machines is so is live um, and therefore will feed back to the plan and tell us whether we're actually going to hit the plan or not. When we don't hit the plan, that will move that um, schedule out to the right, as we call it, um, and show us where there are issues um, and um, incidents that we need to correct and put right. From our point of view, that means that we are keen to make sure that the data we have around us, and that's the biggest issue for us, is making sure the data is good, that the data we have around us is clean um, and produces um, a good quality of um, a response back. My biggest metric, my most important metric, is actually not um, uh, making products and getting out the door. It's about accuracy of planning. Um, and, and I say that with, you know, with the greatest respect to the fact I've still got to get stuff out the door. But if I plan, it's going to take 10 hours and it actually takes 12. Every time it takes 12 hours, I lose two hours. So if I'm making 10 products, I lose a day and a half production. Um, and that impacts me elsewhere. And if I'm going to sell, as I said, in the glass factory model, the capacity, then what I need to be able to do uh, from a company point of view, and from a customer point of view, is plan with the accuracy I need. So that takes us to the fact that the accuracy is key. Um, and so we will be monitoring and adjusting our assumed times for production for each operation and each task um, accordingly. So if it means it goes up, as long as it means that's the accurate way of going up, then that's great. Obviously, the other side of that is we're looking then for efficiency gains, and those efficiency gains are as such that I need to, on a daily basis, review um, the, 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 the reasons why we're not achieving and then to do something about it. The second use case is asset location and asset tracking. For us, the assets are twofold. It is gauging, uh, tooling, um, they come under the same bracket, but also then the components themselves, the products we're making. So um, we're going to be um, adding to each of our boxes that we store products in um, a, um, a wideband real-time location sensor. 
Um, and that then talks through its own network to the 5G network and will pinpoint within 10 centimetres anywhere in the factory um, the location of a box. Um, what that means is we'll know exactly where things are. Um, and believe it or not, even though we're only 19, 20,000 square feet, we still have problems with finding things sometimes um, because they'll be around. Now, the other thing we're doing back using business case one is that we are... Um, we will be relying on the fact that we won't have paperwork, which at the moment travels with the product. So we're removing that paperwork, which is a great advantage to us. But then we need to be able to have that knowledge of where everything is, what it is and what it's doing. Um, additionally to that, our gauging, we're going to use um, two sensors on there. Um, each gauge will have a real time location sensor. Um, initially, they'll be quite large, about the size of a watch, but they will bring those down, scale those eventually. Um, and alongside that, we'll also have a, um, an accelerometer. And what that allows us to do is um, two things. It will track when we pick a gauge up because the accelerometer will move. Um, and in doing so, the, um, that movement, we can count the usage of the gauge. So at the moment, one of our fairly large costs is calibration. And that's because we calibrate gauging on issue because we don't generally track the, the amount of times it's used. So what we can do in this um, process is we can then count those numbers um, issues and in the calibration system which is also a part of our fit factory um, package we can monitor um, how many times the gauge has been used and we can count that for the next time it's due to be calibrated what that allows us to then do is to also understand when the gauge is required is it in calibration and can i use it which will link to the planning system and tell it it can be Alternatively, if the gauge is being used more frequently than it needs to be, let's say we're meant to be doing it once every five parts and we're doing it once every part, um, is there an issue? That will send a location, a signal to quality to go and check, to go out and make sure the operator is okay. Um, and conversely, if it's not being used when it should be, based on a cycle time and planned usage, we're also able to go and check to make sure we're actually haven't got a problem that stopped us using it. Um, the various links back into the system will also allow us to uh, understand um, where gauges are when we come to do calibration. So if they're in quality or if they're on the shop floor, and we need to go and find them, we'll be able to go and find them more accurately. Um, and finally, with that, if we accidentally drop the gauge, the accelerometer will pick up the fact there's been a, a, a higher uh, shock level than normal and will send a signal to quality to come back out and check it. Our third use case is um, around product quality. So we produce quite a lot of high finish components um, where we have very high quality surface finishes um, and they are subject to easily damaging those surface finishes either before or after coatings are applied. So we use allochrome and um, anodizing to finish um, products. So in this particular case, we're only concentrating at the moment on one product uh, to get the concept right. Um, but we've um, worked with a company called Vision Intelligence um, who have um, provided us with a, a small camera. And this camera is fixed on a uh, tracking system, so it will move in and out, and it will move left and right uh, and up and down, obviously. Um, the, um, the camera system um, will take multiple very small but high detailed images. So each one's around 14 megabytes, but we'll be taking five or 600 on a component, stitching them together. The clever bit, because he talks about photographs, is that we're going to teach the software system behind that using the AI within the software what a good part looks like and what a fault looks like and what level of fault is acceptable in some cases. And even in some cases, where that fault's acceptable on the component. We'll store that image as we've completed it. We'll send that product out to be um, coated by our subcom provider. And then we'll do one of two things. We'll either... Uh, I asked the supplier to have one of those um, camera systems and check it themselves before it comes back to us and we we'll do the comparison. Or we'll do the comparison when it comes back here and literally play spot the difference with the AI. What that means for us is it takes away the human element. Um, the issue with quality and, and calibration at all times is quite simple, that we've got um, the, 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 the someone has to make a decision. And depending on if it's... Um, person A or person B that has to make that decision, they may have a slightly different view of it. If it's um, not about a person, it's about the individual's understanding of that standard or how he feels on the day will make a difference. So it will give us certainty and it will give us repeatability um, of that action. 
Equally, we've also got it as a clean record. Now, these files are going to be huge. So we're talking um, uh, at least um, uh, 50, 50 megabytes, you know, uh, 500 megabytes an image, rather, um, with, uh, uh, without even thinking about it, going up to gigs of storage. Um, now, that's a lot to carry around. So the 5G network for us is key. So stitching all those three things together, they are the three elements we're doing in 5G. Um, but we're also working heavily with um, Fit Factory on other things like the accuracy of our data, the, um, the way we plan and other tools that will give us an overall view that we are moving in the right direction at a steady pace. Um, and as I said at the beginning of this, you know, what, what matters to me is accuracy of plan and hitting the plan. So I can give the customers the confidence that when they ask me to do something by day whatever, I hit day whatever happily and without issue, because then they can plan with some certainty themselves. Sort of concluding everything of where we're at, well, one of the lessons learned we've had, or things we've um, really much played with is, one, get the experts to help you. This is actually quite technical and there's a lot going on. Um, I've learned... I've, I've become very geeky all of a sudden. I'm, I learned an awful lot about 5G I didn't know before. So with the help of West Midland 5G, Worcester 5G, BT and Ericsson, um, we've suddenly gained a level of knowledge and support that we couldn't have done without. So I'm, I'm very glad for that. And for the fact that um, DCMS have, uh, have paid towards this uh, to help us get through the project. One of the things I'd say we've learned, we'd pass on to other people is don't go organs blazing on this, start small. Um, and start small so you can control it and so you can implement it and fix things more readily. It's a lot easier fixing across four or five machines in our business than it is across 20 and the whole business relying on you to do it. Um, and I'd say the other thing we've done is we've kept alongside it the manual system. We've done that on purpose because if we decide this isn't the way we're going to go long term, then we've got the manual system to back us up. Um, from my point of view, um, I think i you know, this is going to be the way forward for us. And I think a lot of other people are going to go on a journey as well. Um, so I'm proud and pleased to be part of the, um, the, 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 the vanguard of this and taking the lead. Um, although I would say it's been a, a, a bumpy journey at times. Um, and there are, there are things that um, we'd probably look back and go, maybe not do that same way again from our side, not from the others. Probably things we were advised on and perhaps didn't do. Um, so that's it from me. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. And again, thank you to all the providers that support this uh, across the last uh, few months. Um, and if you are uh, coming to the session afterwards, then I'll look forward to speaking to you then. <laughs>